In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. I, I want you to know Jesus. I, I want you to know the real Jesus. Quite honestly, when I hear some people today talk about Jesus, I find myself feeling somewhat and sometimes very perplexed. Sometimes saddened. And honestly, sometimes I even get angry. If we were to take a camera crew down to the downtown section of Columbus during the lunch hour, we had a bunch of volunteers running around and, and asking them to ask the following question, who is Jesus Christ? Here are some of the answers that you'd get. He was a good man. Some would even say he's the son of God. Some would say he's a great prophet. Some would say a Galilean rabbi, a teacher of God's law, the embodiment of God's love, a reincarnated spirit master, the ultimate revolutionary, the Messiah of Israel, Savior, a first century wise man, some would say a king of kings. Some would say he was just a misunderstood teacher. Some would say he's Lord of the universe. Some would say he's a fool who thought he was God's son. Some would say he's the son of man. Some would say he was a fabrication of the early church. And when I hear some people talk about Jesus in my mind, I think... Who are you talking about? Because the Jesus you describe is not the Jesus I know, nor is he the Jesus we find in the pages of the New Testament. And sometimes I do get just a little bit angry because the one that I walk with now for greater than 40 years, I feel often is misinterpreted and misrepresented. Yes. Amen. The first generational church was faced with the question in John 13, 38. Will you lay down your life for my sake? Uh -huh. And how many of our spiritual forefathers went to their martyr's death believing that Jesus was indeed absolutely the son of the living God? Yes. Yes. The apostolic fathers dealt personally with this, James and Peter. And Paul, they were followed by the likes of Ignatius of Antioch and Polycarp of Smyrna. And then came the Nicene and fathers. Another question emerged, and it was this. What do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? And some taught that he was just a creation of God for the moment. But fortunately, those forefathers said, no, he is the son of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the council of Nessia came the Nicene Creed, which settled and affirmed to the church that the Son was the same nature as the Father. And in those days, uh, this question on his heart, Anathnasia stood tall as a defender of the faith. He defended the divinity of Jesus Christ. But today, people don't want to say that he truly is the Son of God, that he is divine. But as for me and my house, uh, we believe that Jesus is uh, truly the Son of God. Without apology, we believe that he is the Son of God. Amen.